People usually talk a lot about prayer. They also, many of them believe in prayer, but very few understand how to pray. Not that it's a complicated science, but it's not simple also, because we have a tendency to do the same thing again and again and again. For instance, the disciples, they are good Christians. They are Jesus' disciples. Yet, after watching Jesus praying, they understood that they don't know how to pray. So they said, teach us how to pray. That means that we don't know how to pray. The book of Romans says that the Holy Spirit has to intercede for us because we don't know how to pray. I've been watching people in church, people that are spiritual people, Christians, and if you watch carefully, they pray the same prayer always. I remember in one of my churches, I'm not going to mention the location, but in one of my churches, there was a guy that prayed always, he would always pray the same prayer. Basically, after a few years, everybody knew the prayer by memory. We could say the words ahead of him. We knew exactly what word is next. He would pray the same prayer. And so basically, if you pray the same prayer always, that prayer becomes kind of a poetry, more a routine. I've been watching people in church and uh, all of them, after a while, you learn how they pray. And then if you listen to yourself at home, you would realize that if you record yourself or watch yourself after a week, after a month, you realize that you kind of pray the same prayer every day and you don't feel good if you leave this segment or that segment out, you feel that you need to say everything. But prayer is not a routine. It's not a poetry. If you say the same words always, you'll get used to them. You'll not even have to think about it. It's like poetry. They just come. You can be thinking about the game or about politics or about business. Uh, words would come because you are used to say the same words. You don't even need to think about it. That's the reason we cannot even focus. We don't get answers. I cannot imagine if I would say the same words to my wife every day. I think I would have to sleep on the couch. My wife wants me not to go every morning and say, good morning, thank you for being with me last night, please be with me today, and the kind of the same words. My wife wants me to be open, to be honest, to have an authentic, open conversation. Prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. It's an honest, simple, humble conversation. It's a dialogue. When you talk to a friend, you don't say the same words like a slogan every day. You have a dialogue. You talk openly. Doesn't matter if it's something serious or you talk about something that was pleasant or funny or you tell a story, but you don't meet your friend and say every time the same words. You talk about something that just happened, something relevant. Prayer should be the same. Well, people go to church. People pray uh, at home, pray in the morning, the morning prayer, pray in the evening, the prayer before they go to sleep, and pray before the meals, the prayer for the meal. But the Bible says pray without ceasing. That means that you pray, have to pray all the time. The prayer is the breath. One of the inspired books says prayer is the breath of the soul. You don't breathe only in the morning, in the evening, and before the meals. You breathe all the time if you want to stay alive. So prayer... You need to pray all the time. What we understand through prayer many times is that either we do routine, our habit, or we ask something. I pray that God would help me with my job. We ask something. To pray without ceasing doesn't mean to do routine or to keep asking. It means to have a continual connection, breathing, to be continually connected with God. And so we will go deeper in that. But for now, let's think a little about how you learn how to pray. I was small, four years old, five years old. I don't know precisely how old. But I noticed people just praying routine prayers, praying slogan habit prayers. <clears throat> but I noticed, I noticed my father praying differently. When he prayed, his prayers were simple and to the heart. Let me explain what that means. People in prayer, moreover, when they pray in public, 
they try to choose flowery, pompous, sophisticated words to impress the others. Prayer is not to impress people and not to impress God. Your nice words, well-selected words, don't impress God. Rather, an honest, broken heart would impress God. And so, my father would not pray like the others, but he would rather, when he prayed in public, his prayers were short, simple, honest, and straight to the subject. When he prayed at home, I would see him praying along, not routine prayers, two minutes in the morning, two minutes in the evening, but rather spending hours in prayer. My father would pray differently. I saw him praying sometimes for hours, sometimes 15 minutes, sometimes half an hour, sometimes two hours, and sometimes the whole night. Not always. In the Bible, he says that Jesus would wake up early in the morning. But also in the Bible, he says that once in a while, Jesus would spend the whole night in prayer. And so I saw my father doing that. And I had a talk with him. I said, why do you pray so long? To make a parenthesis, I like water. Oh, I love water. In heaven, I'm going to build my house on water, maybe on a lake. And when it was hot, when I was young, and there was a hot day in the summer, my mom had a container. I don't know how to call it. It was like this shape, and it was taller at this end and smaller at this end. And I would get in that container like a tub. Uh, like a bathtub and my head was here and my legs here it was filled with water and it was hot outside maybe 43 degrees celsius uh, i would get in the water and cool down and once in a while when i had headaches because it was too hot i would get my head under the water and then get up again and i would feel really good so my father said to me i said why do you pray so long what do you say when you pray so long? What do you need to pray so long? My father would say, you know when you get under the water? I said, yes. Where is the water? I would say, all over. In front, in the back, in left, in the right, above and under, all around me. And my father would say, so I need God's presence. As you need water and enjoy water, so I need God's presence. And I want it all over me to surround me all around, everywhere. And then my father would say, when you call God, Satan runs away. Satan and God don't live together. When God comes in, Satan goes out. And whatever part is not covered by God's presence, that's the part that is exposed, vulnerable to Satan's attacks. So my father would pray the whole night. I said, and what do you say so much? And he would say, well, I pray to know God, a desire to understand him because eternal life is to know God. And I pray that I understand God's plan and I pray for people in need. And I pray that I understand how to help people and how to behave like Jesus. Not only to tell what Jesus told, but to live the way Jesus lived. Because that's the most powerful testimony. is not what you say, but is what you do. And I pray for you and for your sister and for your mom. And I pray for the church. And if I go one by one through the names, then that takes a long time. So that's the reason I pray so much. And I said to him, well, you pray for me uh, and for mom and for my sister. How long? And he said, a lot. I said, well, we, we, I don't need so much prayer. And he would say, well, that's the reason I pray so much, because you think you don't need so much prayer. My father prayed a lot. But then I noticed that my father was different. He had a spiritual life. He walked with God. He was very profound. When he spoke, people listened. You could sense that he, whatever he says, you could sense wisdom and God's words in it. And <clears throat> also, my father had a lot of stories. People don't have stories, don't have miracles, don't have experience with God. People just have a regular life. My father had a lot of stories, powerful stories of answered prayers. And I started to understand because he prays so much. He gets those stories, those experiences, those answered prayers. You see, 
People want big answers with small prayers. Small prayer, small answer. You want big answers, you need to pray big prayers. And my father started to explain about prayer. And he would say, prayer is not the words that you say, but rather the relationship that you build. Prayer is like in family, when you are married, the more time you spend with your spouse, the more you know your spouse. The more time you spend with God, the more you know God. Well, I started to understand later when I was dating my first girlfriend and last, because she is my wife. Never had a girlfriend before or after, obviously. And so I started to understand what he meant to pray differently, not to pray routine, not to pray duty, not to pray poetry, same words, not to pray crisis. You pray only when you lost your job, when you have cancer, when you are in a divorce, but rather to pray relationship, to try to know God, to spend time with him, to open your heart, to try to pray for others, pray that you will understand God's plan and you will follow God's plan. To pray prayer that is the opening of the heart. To pray prayer that is a conversation, an honest dialogue. God is inviting us to pray those types of prayers.